So this is Revelation chapter 19, the scripture for the 25th of November. In Revelation 19 and 20, evil, sin, death, they've all been defeated, at least in theory. Uh, All of evil's instruments have been dominated by the work of God in Jesus Christ. And yet, the reality of, of the triumph of God and the heavenly armies, although it's inevitable, it hasn't been fully pushed out yet. It's sort of like when you know that somebody has emailed you, but your your phone hasn't like received the email yet, right? There's that delay. In spite of the fall of Babylon, the earth doesn't know that sin and death have been defeated. There's that delay. It's hit the server, but it's not been pushed out to your phone. So we get this split screen effect in, in, in Revelation chapter 19 with heaven celebrating, singing praises and, and, and doxologies to God and to the Lamb, much like we saw in chapters 4 and 5 when we got that vision of, of the heavenly sanctuary. But then at the same time, on the other hand, you have the kings and, and the armies of the earth gearing up for war against heaven. They don't realize that the battle has been won. The war is over. This is pointless. Surrender is, 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 is already happening. And I think that this is a poignant reminder of how prone we are to self-deception. Who, who in their right mind would think of waging war against heaven? It's just ridiculous. And yet, and yet, we do this regularly. By our sinful rebellion, we ought to be righteously, like, we rightly ought to be counted among those who are making war against the rider and his army. Even John himself bowed down to worship the angel, showing him these things, giving the glory that ought only to belong to God, giving that glory to a created being in this angel. We offer up our time and our energy to so many seemingly worthwhile things that are ultimately unworthy endeavors. And then when Jesus Christ demands our full, undivided attention and worship, we end up looking for gods and lords that are okay with just partial dedication, just for a time, just for a season, just, you know, when you think about it. This is who we are as human beings, but thanks be to God in Jesus Christ. Compare the vision of Jesus in this chapter with the vision in chapter 1. I've included the link uh, describing or given the infographic for the vision in chapter 1 in the description here. Uh, He's now unequivocally called the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He's established his rulership over the, the, the entire world. And his long robe has now been dripped in blood. Don't miss this. By his sacrifice, our sin has been cleansed. And although we were once enemies, we now have been brought near to stand at the side of Jesus Christ, part of his bride, the church, ready to partake in the marriage feast of the Lamb. Jesus, in distinction over and against the beast, is crowned with many crowns, many diadems. Not simply the ten that the beast has. He rules over all creation and has redeemed all his people. So although if if God were simply just and not gracious, we'd be counted with the armies that do war against the kingdom of heaven. God is also gracious and thanks be to God in Jesus Christ who has brought us up together with Christ, counted us righteous. Now, in contrast to the marriage feast of the Lamb, the judgment of God is poured out against the armies of the world, creating a great supper for all the birds of the air. Now, I also want you to notice, though, apart from this sort of disturbing imagery of birds feasting on the flesh of kings and lords, the only weapon that is unsheathed against the earth that's used in this battle is the sword of Jesus, the, the, the sword that's sharp on, on two sides uh, that comes out of the, the mouth of the word of God. Christians are not called to be crusaders. Christians instead are called to offer ultimate allegiance to Jesus Christ alone and to trust that he will wipe away evil, sin, and death. So I wonder, who or what, other than Jesus, are you tempted to worship? That's all for Revelation 19. Uh, Tomorrow, on Thanksgiving, we'll look at Revelation chapter 20. May God bless you in your reading of Scripture.